Well, good evening, I think it is nearly good evening. Good evening. Welcome to everybody who has arrived on time. There are some people who are stuck in the traffic. Anybody who doesn't understand Urdu, apart from Matthew, who is with me and he understands perfect Urdu. <laughs> so everybody understand Urdu? Yeah, yeah. Uh, second thing, how many of you are counselor and farmer counselors? Can you raise hands? Can, uh, can you, somebody just count it? Somebody who is quick in counting, Prasad? Thank you very much. Thank you. We have got quite few. Few are coming. Lad Kurban, Khalid Mahmood, Mohammed Asghar Bhatt from Brent, uh, uh, Ahmed Shizad. You know these people. That's why I'm doing it. We will have a time to speak to each other, to uh, uh, speak uh, on the subject. The subject of today is value of registering and voting in the incoming election. Uh, in a minute, the chairman will uh, welcome you all formally and then I will tell you what is the purpose and how can we move forward from today. Uh, but once again, thank you very much. But before I ask the chairman, can I ask former mayor, youngest mayor, Councillor Nadeem Ali, to start with the recitation from the Quran and then we will go move to the next. <coughs> thank you. A'awuzu billahi min shaitan rajeem Bismillah rahman rahim إنا أعطينا كالكوسر فصل لربك والحر إنا شاني أكاه والأبطار صدق الله مولانا العظيم. Thank you very much. The chairman comes in after three. Follow me. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. السلام عليكم. سيدا. Good afternoon to all of you. And certainly, such a family may suffer the hard mushkul. कि आप यहाँ पर आए अपना कीमती वक्त निकाल कर और इट्स वंडरफुल टू सी सो मेनी काउंसलर्स कमिंग हियर एंड सो मेनी फॉर्मर काउंसलर्स एंड ऑल एंड सम ऑफ़ दी रियली इम्पोर्टेंट गेस्ट फ्रॉम दी कम्युनिटी आई आल्सो वांट टू वेलकम हियर अवर पॉलिटिकल सेक्रेटरी फ्रॉम दी हाई कमिशन कमिंग हियर से सब वे रियली इंडेक्टे� and every single one of your really, really important uh, uh, guests here at this uh, Pakistani Kashmiri Councillors Forum uh, meeting here uh, today. And I really want to welcome all of you uh, here. And it certainly gives me great pleasure uh, to welcome this because uh, certainly for a long time we haven't met as uh, Pakistani Kashmiri Councillors Forums. And it's really important that we are meeting and we are discussing things uh, uh, along the way and uh, today uh, it was a great effort by uh, my brother here Mushtaq Mashari in getting this organized and uh, wanted it just before the election so that uh, uh, irrespective of whatever party it is because this uh, Pakistani Kishwini Council Forum belongs to all parties it's not one party uh, whatever party it is it's, it's really important that they're part of this uh, uh, this uh, and we really want to uh, build this forum so that it is a big platform where we can uh, speak uh, with one voice uh, about uh, our Pakistani uh, community out there and what we can do uh, uh, on that. But today uh, we are here together and there are specific topics today. It's about the uh, value of a vote, uh, it's about the value of registering uh, those uh, voting and uh, you will certainly hear from some of our keynote uh, speakers uh, in, uh, in that. It might be from different parties, so everybody's got to bear, bear in mind, in respect of whatever party, please bear, bear that in mind and it's important to listen to every party on that basis. So that's all I'm going to say now at the moment. I'm going to hand over back to Mushtaq uh, Shari Saab to bring back uh, some of the rest of the uh, I think food will be served afterward, but you can give a good clap to every speaker when they speak, if you feel that. If you don't, I will give them clap. So, uh, welcome once again. There are very few concerts, as you saw, and there are many few concerts from different political parties. And I'm very, very pleased uh, with 
one special person who has already been nominated mayor for next year and his party out of 54 councillors had 49 councillors. So his chances of getting elected are very high. So can we congratulate councillor Muhammad Sadiq from Sutton? He will stand up and introduce him. We hope that Conservative Party will catch up and there are few councillors sitting here. Councillor Safra Anjum and his son, Councillor uh, Raza Anjum, and Raza Anjum will be speaking on behalf of Conservative Party. And then there are former councillors as well. We are very lucky to have Britain as our country of living. Because Britain is the country which doesn't uh, discriminate everybody on their religious basis, on their color basis, or on their class basis. It gives opportunities to everyone. And that's why I love this country, and that's why I want to live in this country and enjoy life as I am enjoying here. We are Pakistanis, and we know that Pakistan is the best country over the world. It is one of the most emerging economies in the world. It is most prosperous democracy in the world. It is tackling the challenges which we see every day in the country. But today, subject is not Pakistan, subject is not Conservative Party, Labour, Liberal, or any other party, but the subject is British elections, which are coming up on 7th of May, 9, 2015. <coughs> elections are very closely fought. I think everybody knows that today, Labour Party was 34%, Conservative Party was 32%. Yesterday, Conservative Party was 38%, Labour was 37%. So it is a very close contested election. And Liberal Democrat and UK Party and Green Party are challenging as well. This is now new dimension that this country will have a very, very uh, diverse and not a single party majority, but it will be a, a, a hung party. That is everybody's prediction. I hope that one of the parties will win outright and make and form a confident and strong government. But we know that in this country the system is set that first pass the post. My request, I'm stopping here, my request, can you switch off your phone? I have done it uh, already. Uh, I, I know that today my phone will be quite hot, but still I've done it, so please, very kind of you. If it is not very important that Queen is not calling you, then uh, so it is very interesting period of time in which we are living today. <laughs> we are living in a very interesting period of time and the time is that in Britain no party has 10% lead, no party is, have that sort of confidence that they will win outright. They are trying their best, both Labour and Conservative. Yesterday I heard David Cameron and uh, Ed Miliband and they said we are going to win, but we don't know who will win. And Liberal Democrats are there, the people are there, the Green Party is there, and we will listen to them. I think, with that, I think it is important that when you go out, and I'm very thankful to the media, I think there are quite few media, ARY, Dunya, Geo, uh, Nation, Osaf, and many others, and especially Matthew Buxton, who is going to put it on YouTube. So anybody who has any objection of their picture, please hide yourself. It is going to go on, on YouTube and everybody will listen. So can I, with these remarks, say that it was very important that we hold this meeting on 28th. It is very important that the next meeting will be held in the middle of April in London. And it is very important that we started from London. Today we only invited London councillor and farmer councillor which are 55 from Pakistani region. And I think there are more than 60% present here, so we are very, very good represented. With that, can I say that it is important that when you go out, speak to your community leaders, speak to other people, ask them to register, ask them to vote on 7th of 
uh, nail to their favorite parties, the parties which they believe are the best. With that, I will invite the first speaker. It happened to be, he is uh, from Saffron Golden. He is a young man. He is a chairman of and founder of uh, Muslim Friends of Kandari Party. And I will ask Farmer Councilor Raza Anjan, who is a barrister, and I want to congratulate and everybody else as well. His mother-in-law has become uh, recently senator in Pakistan, Senator uh, uh, Mrs. Abel. And it is good. So with that congratulation, Raza Anjan, you speak on behalf of the party and tell us why we should register and vote in the next election. Raza Anjan. Uh, Press the button. Press the button. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, my name is Raza Anjum. I'm the chairman of the Conservative Muslim Forum Youth Wing. Uh, I got a phone call from uh, Councillor Lashari Saab yesterday, and he mentioned to me, Raza, uh, what are you doing tomorrow? I'm going to need you to come, if possible, to Walthamstow. I said, Uncle, I've been invited to the spring conference of the Conservative Party, and I got an invitation directly from somebody from 10 Downing Street. But on the request of Leakert and uh, <coughs> Councillor uh, Lashari Saab, I couldn't turn them down. And I'm very uh, thankful to be here. And I have to commend them as well for putting on today's show. And it's very difficult to get this number of people together, particularly at a time close to the election. So I want to start off with a round of applause for Mayor Leakert Saab and Councillor Lashari The issue of voter registration is very important to my heart. In fact, last Monday I was chairing an event in the House of Lords about this very subject. And one point which was raised was that last year the government undertook a study and they identified that 7.5 million people who were eligible to vote were not actually registered to vote. 7.5 million people, that's a huge segment of the electoral population. And in addition to that, it's important to note that ethnic minorities, the very people who are in this room today, can play a significant role not only in this election but in forthcoming elections. And there are in fact 168 marginal seats across the country, 168, where the vote of the ethnic minority community is larger than the vote of the uh, MPs who are currently in power. So if ethnic minorities exercise their vote in 168 uh, MP constituencies across the country, they can actually play a decisive role. Now, there are several reasons why you need to, to register to vote. First of all, the most obvious reason is if you do not register to vote, you will not be able to participate in the elections. You won't be able to cast your vote. What does that mean? If you can't cast your vote, it means that you can't put somebody into office who represents your views. As Councillor Lashari mentioned, there are some difficulties amongst the British Pakistani community. We're all well aware when we read the newspaper in the morning or when we watch TV, we often hear about issues concerning national security. We sometimes hear about discrimination as well and educational problems. So it's important that the community registers the vote, and they put into power people who can represent their views. And I don't want to take up too much time, but I want to deliver a message to each of you. And that message is that if you're not registered to vote, you must do so. And if you know of other people who are not registered to vote, it's your responsibility to tell them to register to vote. Because collectively, we can make a difference. Thank you. Once you are speaking, you just press a machine in front of you, and when you finish your speech, please press it again. I don't want Councilor Dakota every time answering it, because he's chairing, and I want him to relax, really. And thank you very much, uh, Razanjan. It is a pleasure always. Uh, you are always to the point, brief, and very good. I'm getting messages from different people who are stuck on the traffic, but I thought that we have been living here for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and now we know that there is a traffic, so leave early. I was there at 3.30, I left home at 2 o'clock. Matthew was saying, why you are leaving so early? I said, because traffic can be sometimes difficult. Can I invite my next speaker? And let me say something here very important. When I thought of this, actually I thought of this on 5th of February, when I held a meeting on Kashmir in House of Parliament, and we had a difficulty. 
because it was Thursday. And on Thursdays, MPs are not available in the House of Commons. So I tried to persuade some of them, and they said, we can't come. And then I asked some of the councillors, and they were able to bring uh, their MPs. And I thought, that means councillors are quite influential people. So I thought, let's think on it and make them a group of councillors and ask them to become more influential whenever needed. So I started thinking on it. I went to High Commissioner and I asked him, do you think it is a good idea? He said it is a wonderful idea and he has been since saying this publicly that the British Pakistanis should get involved in local politics. They should register themselves here, they should vote here, they should join the political party. So Raza, it is not only our wish, it is also democratically elected Pakistani government representative request as well. And I am very thankful for High Commission for supporting me because I couldn't reach to all of you. So I requested them to give me your details, so they helped me to get your details. It would have been taken me one year to combine your list, but they helped me and they uh, helped. So I am really thankful to High Commission, their officers are here, they are sitting representing here, and, but they are here as observers. So can I thank all of them for their support who are here and who are not here because they were very busy today and I really pushed them to come here because I think there are some VIP visits here, we might meet them tomorrow or day after. So let's give them a good welcome. <laughs> and now, farmer councillor, cabinet member for Walton Forest, now lives in Ealing and is a candidate for UK party from which constituency he will tell us, Afzal Akram, to speak on behalf of UK. Mr. Chairman, Councillor Liakat Ali, Mr. Shari Saab, thank you very much for your kind invitation here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here. This chamber brings back memories for me, for I was a, a councillor here and a cabinet member for eight years. It's always a, a great pleasure to speak here. And I want to congratulate uh, Mr. Shari Saab particularly because he's a very advocate uh, politician, a socialist and a die-hard Labour supporter, but whenever he does hold functions, um, he believes in true democracy, which is about involving everybody, regardless of what their political beliefs are, because there is a place for everyone uh, to participate. <clears throat> the younger brother articulated very well on why we should register um, and why we should vote. Um, and I just want to touch a little bit about uh, that. As a community, we're usually very good at criticizing, and we're very good at saying something's wrong yet we don't get involved or we don't get the right people involved at the right level in order to enable change. I entered politics late in my career, about 10 years ago, in order to make change because I was sitting on many government boards and influencing the politicians um, who were making policy and setting policy. But there's only so much you can do from outside. Ultimate change and ultimate change in direction will only happen when you are around that decision-making table yourself. Over the years, and my father came to the UK around 1960, I was born here, we've seen different types of policies, different types of politics, and different problems that, as a community, we've had in getting our foot onto the ladder and getting involved in politics. MashaAllah, now we are represented um, across all uh, levels and all spheres of politics, whether that's through the uh, local council chambers, uh, members of parliament, regional assemblies, or the Lords itself. What we now need to do is give it the next push. And that next push is to ensure that we get sufficient representation <coughs> at all these levels, but not only just taking backbench seats, but enabling our more capable colleagues who have the ability, the time, resources to actually take higher positions and higher seats, uh, whether that be in the Lords or the uh, Parliament or the Council Chamber itself. And I know Liakat's a Cabinet Member here, and I've just seen Hassan at the back as well, who's a Cabinet Member here in Wolven Forest. And Wolven Forest has been leading the way in promoting people and giving them an opportunity. But in order to do that, we need to ensure that everybody from within the community, and I'll talk about our, com our community because this organization is primarily for Pakistani and Kashmiris. We need to ensure that everyone is first of all registered to vote. 
we go door knocking, we go canvassing, and we realize there are six, seven, eight people living in typical Asian Pakistani households, yet on the canvas list only two or three are registered or none at all. And that's our fault. It's even harder now, and that's why I think Mushtaq uh, Lashari uh, Sahib actually organized this now as well. It's even harder now to register because before one person in the house could register everybody. And I don't know if people are aware or not now, that doesn't happen anymore. We now have to register individually. That means individual applications, individually taking out the time to do that. And what that's happened is the actual rate of registrations has fallen. It has fallen because it's going to take a bit of time for people to get used to the system. And that's why as councillors, as community leaders, I think it's our responsibility to go out and educate, and I know the press are here as well, and hopefully they were right about this as well, is to educate people and say, don't assume that you are on the new list just because you were on it last year. You need to double check because now you have to individually register. With regards to political parties, I think until we are represented across all parties, we will not get our fair share. Now, whether you are yourself a member, supporting or voting for, whether it's the Conservatives, Labour, UKIP, Lib Dem, <coughs> Greens or anyone else, I don't think that's a bad problem at all. The main thing is to get involved, to debate, have your voice heard, and then what we forget once we elect people is we need to hold them to account. I have been a politician, I have made promises, I have held myself account to my constituents and some of us forget that when we get into power as a position that actually somebody did vote for us and put us in there. And that's something that we need to make sure that as constituents we hold our members um, who are elected to account and so they fulfil our wishes, not just what their own personal agendas are. So on that note, uh, uh, Mr Chairman, uh, Mr. Shreya thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to speak on behalf of UKIP as well. We are here with you, we're here to support and work with you as a community and look forward to that. Thank you. We are expecting Lord Kurban Sai to come and represent, but because we have a uh, very senior councillor of Liberal Democrat, I will invite him in a minute to say a few words, but before that, I want to invite another councillor who is very actively involved uh, in our organization. He is one of the youngest, I think, first Pakhtun. So there is a representation of Pakhtun people here from KPK. Can I invite Councillor Ubaid Khan to say a few words on the table? You got to turn your one off first. No? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Che. Councillor Lashari, or ex councillor Lashari, thank you very much for the councillors. I am delighted and honoured to be here to talk, and thank you very much for your kind of uh, uh, introduction as well. Yes, I am the first Pukhtun from KPK to be elected as a councillor in London. And what the what uh, uh, Braza said, very uh, good um, uh, stuff about why should we register. Councillor Afzal said the same thing. Why should we register? If you don't register, you don't have a say. Don't waste your vote. You, if you don't register to vote, you're wasting your right to say, to send the right people to the parliament to make decisions, policies on your behalf. And that is absolutely a waste of vote. So please, I would urge every well, councillors, every community leaders to go and help your communities, to ask them to help them, to support them, even if they were, sometimes it's not a good excuse to say, oh, we can't speak English and we can't fill the form and then you can't just register. No, that's not good. You go and help them in your own language. You, you help them, you support them. And please, just educate them how it, important it is to go and send the right people to the parliament to make right decisions for you. So it is, I'm, I'm, not, I'm gonna be very brief because I've got so many, I can see so many people would be uh, 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 um, speaking on this uh, uh, um, important issue. So, very brief, just, just educate as much as possible. It is a great, great debate, and then please just go out and help as much as possible your constituents, your friends, your relatives, 
and then ask them to vote, register and vote, please. Thank you very much again. <laughs> Thank, thank you very much, Councillor Obeid uh, Khan. Before I invite Councillor Mohamed Sadiq from Sutton, I want to give you, share you some few uh, uh, things. Pakistanis are about 1.1 million. 1.1 million is on the census of 2011. 1.3 is a student. That means we are about 1% of the total population, which is 66. Registered and unregistered people say about 70 million. But the Pakistani, British Pakistani contribute 3% of the GDP. Our contribution is three times more than our population. So I think it is not only that we should join the politics. If you are a businessman, and there are quite few people who are here from business community, there are many who will say that they are social workers, uh, other areas, so we should join all aspects of life in British society, that we become integrated. That is the best way of integration. And actually the theme of today is also very important. The theme has been circulated, but I will circulate more copies to few people who doesn't have it. It says, let's join hands to educate the community to uh, make them understand the importance of registering and voting in election by participating in discharging of civic responsibilities, we will not only better integrate full our moral and social responsibilities, but we will aware also the opportunities to interact and understand other communities in a better way as a British, only respecting religious and ethical boundaries of our own. Welcome to our meeting. Thank you very much, Kalimun. So I know it is, it is the traffic, otherwise he would have been here at 5 o'clock, I know. Thank you. He is travel all the way from Birmingham to attend special this meeting. So thank you. Now I will invite Councillor Mohammed Sadiq, elect uh, Mayor of Sutton. Councillor Mohammed Sadiq. Thank you, Mr. Lashari. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ethnic vote is very, very important. I, before I go any further, I just would like to read a couple of text messages which will emphasize what I'm trying to say. I was door knocking today and delivering leaflets. And I went to this dog, he's a white gentleman, you know, and I couldn't find him home. I left a message, I sent him a message saying, hello, Mr. Gregory, I'm Mohammed Sadiq, one of your local Lib Dem councillors. I came to deliver some leaflets for Tom, who is a member of parliament, but could not find entrance to your flat. Please kindly advise Man, uh, uh, please kindly advise, many thanks for your continued support. His reply to me has been, you might, I, he says, I can't do any more leaflets dropping. Stop wasting paper, EDL supporter hair, ban the burqa. It is very, very important that our ethnic minority people, you know, they are register themselves to vote. At times, I go and knock on doors, especially on our, forgive me for saying it, you know, especially on our people's door, and they say, we will think about it, you know. Rather than giving you support, saying, well done, you are standing, you are representing us, you know, they say, yeah, we will think about it, you know. But if I send somebody else, if instead of me, I send Lord Tope, he gets a different treatment. They'd say to him, yeah, yeah, we will certainly vote for you, you know. Whereas they have said the same thing to me. Mm -hmm. Honestly, true, you know, true. it's a personal experience. I was canvassing in Kingston, knocked on this door, Asian Pakistani people. We are too busy to talk to you. I said, look, you know, can you come back? I said, look, you know, I live in Croydon. I've come all the way to Croydon to canvass in Kingston. I just want to know, if, would you be supporting this candidate or not? No, sorry, I'm too busy. A little bit further, I had Lord talk with me. He was canvassing. When I said to 
Graham. I said, Graham, can you go and knock on this door, please? He was called in and he was offered a cup of tea. <laughs> Whereas this gentleman didn't have any time to talk to me, you know. So if we don't support our people, who else is going to support us? You right. know? Mm -hmm. We got to knock on people's door, we got to educate them, as you said, that every speaker said, you know, we got to educate them. The voting is very, very important. And uh, as you said, now if you get registered, they check with Department of Work and Pensions. If you haven't got a national insurance number and you are not registered with Department of Work and Pensions, you will not be able to vote. You must have national insurance number. You must be on the register of work and pensions. Otherwise, you won't be able to vote. You know. Thank you, Mr. Lashari. Thank you very much, Councilor Mohammad Sadiq. We have uh, uh, one sitting female councillor, three former councillors. I am going to invite another councillor to speak before them. But can I uh, ask who will like to speak? I'm, I'm asking for female. Uh, I'm sorry, time's up. I will come to you in a minute. Uh, so, yeah, you want to speak? Uh, Mayor Khan. So, I will invite in a minute. Asghar Sahib, you come here. Your seat is here. Can I also welcome Ahmad Asghar Bhatt, the leader of the Prime Minister? Asghar Sahib, and Ahmad Shah Sahib. Yes, I will. I will see. I will see. I know you, you are stuck in the traffic, so I have been receiving messages from people. So, Conscience is Ahad Sahib, Chaudhi Sahib, Uttar Adi, Vahim Pati, wherever you can find Thank you. Can I, so I've got two people, Subiya Shadar and Meir Khan, will, will speak after. Shubhuftar. Shubhuftar, I'm asking at the moment, Councillor. I'll come to you as well. I will uh, come to Tahir and Shubhuftar later on. So, can I ask, Farmer Mayor, Councillor Nadeem Ali, to say a few words on this subject, and then I will ask Mayor Khan, and then Sri Ashraf. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, uh, thank you very much, um, the Shari Saab. Um, the Honorable MP, Khalid Mahmood Saab. I know we have the leader of Brent, uh, Askar Bhatt Saab. My fellow councillors, Brothers and sisters, elders, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to each and every single one of you. First of all, can I just say how proud and honored I am that we are having this event, the Pakistani and Kashmiri uh, Councillors Forum event here in the London Borough of Waltham Forest. I know this organization was set up a long, long time ago, but to be revived and revived here in Waltham Forest, it speaks volumes. So can I congratulate Ustad um, Mishwari Saab and my noble father, Councillor Yaakut Ali, MBE Saab, for organizing this and getting all these wonderful, wonderful people here in the London Borough of Waltham Forest. And I'm sure they deserve a round of applause. Oh. Uh, and so moving swiftly onto the the subject, the, a subject that we have been given is why is it so important to register to vote? I mean, and a lot of the previous speakers have already touched upon it uh, and they have very uh, articulately described why and what is the reason why we should uh, register to vote because well, I, I, I tell you, I, I've been a local councillor here since 2010 and when I was knocking on doors and we have just seen that uh, a lot of the people from Pakistani uh, and other ethnic minority backgrounds, just um, only two or three people are, are registered to vote, but actually they're entitled, like eight, ten people in a household are entitled to vote. Anybody over the age of 18 is entitled to vote. And so it is really, really important. I know we have the media here, we have the press here, and we've got all you guys. You guys, I mean, everybody here is an, uh, either a form of former councillor or is a current councillor. And you, and I know we have some community leaders here also. I mean, if each and every single person here makes a commitment 
yeah, that we will tell our family members to all vote because now the, the, the system of registration has changed slightly. Every single person, first it used to be a form, one person in the household used to write down all the people, um, uh, the, all the people's names on that form and everybody used to get a polling card and they used to be, a, be, be able to vote. But now what's happened is every individual person in that household has to write down their name and their age of birth and in some cases they, uh, they have to put down their national insurance numbers as well. And these are the changes that have been made and brought in uh, just recently. So now it is our responsibility, I think, collectively that, uh, we're, that we should try to register to vote. And it is very, very important because we all know the importance of voting, the importance of registering to voting. So it is uh, what's that I know and I can assure you and assure yourself that here in Wolfram Forest that we will be when we uh, we certainly will be uh, asking all uh, our family members and all the rest of the community and urging all the community to register to, to vote because it is a very very important piece that we should be doing but I know you have other speakers uh, so, once again, thank you very much for allowing me to say a few words and, and congratulations to you and uh, Councillor Anissa for organising this. Thank you very much, and we uh, really want to welcome our guests uh, here, Hamid uh, Mamusa, uh, our uh, Member of Parliament, one of the longest serving Member of Parliament, one of the most senior politician in the United Kingdom uh, itself and we're uh, really pleased to welcome him and uh, also welcome our uh, leader for Brent, uh, uh, Councillor Mahmoud Bhatt, uh, uh, here today and it's uh, really great to see so many uh, of uh, councillors, former councillors uh, and some really, really important dignitaries and those to be, to be, uh, to be aspiring uh, councillors. Uh, and uh, before we come onto this uh, stage here, I want to also uh, call up uh, to say a few words uh, Councillor Emma Shazad Saab, uh, who is the OBE and also a councillor in Brent and former mayor. Please say a few words. Thank you very much, uh, Andy. Uh, thank you very much, Andy. I just uh, want to say a few words really about uh, the discretion. Uh, of uh, uh, putting your own names on the electoral register. Apparently, uh, in, in my experience, I think our uh, community in large has been registered because uh, if you are not registered, uh, you, you can't get your passport, you can't get your license, uh, and uh, you know, and, and, and many other things. So therefore. It, at large, or maybe even yes, but uh, the Eastern European. But my my experience uh, tells me that uh, when you go and knock at the door where the Eastern Europeans are living, I think they are majority of them are uh, labour supporters, and uh, yet they, many of them are reluctant to register. So I think what we ought to do is uh, door to door. Uh, <coughs> You know, knocking at door to door and finding out uh, who are those people who are not registered and trying to persuade them. Uh, as far as uh, uh, this uh, forum is concerned, I think uh, uh, I'm all for it as long as uh, this forum uh, delivers something. We, in, in the past, uh, there have been uh, three organizations set up uh, and all three uh, worked for a year and a half. Uh, and so on, and then they just vanished, to be frank. And they were all uh, councillors, and many of them, many of my contact we are here, I see, uh, who were part of uh, this uh, organization, which we set up I'm back I'm in the I'm not trying to stop you in any way today, we're just talking about voting, the rights of voting, okay. register of voting, future of, uh, and then. Obviously, we will come back. There's going to be networking, and it's really important that we do keep to a time limit. 
Kalama Musaf come all the way from Birmingham for this specific meeting and it really got to shoot off with the you know, so. No, I, think that, uh, I, mean, then I don't have to add anything. I just want to say because I, the invitation I received, it was for two, uh, two bits. One is the voting registration and then uh, the photo. But if you don't want me to say anything about the photo, that's fine. Uh, and I hope when time comes, uh, you will uh, ask me to say a few words about the photo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, now, uh, out of sequence, I'm going to ask uh, um, our, quite a senior, a senior person who was the uh, former councillor before in Greenwich, uh, uh, Sakia Shazar, and he's done a hell of a lot of work out in the community to say a few words. Uh, in, in essence. 
And I would really like to say that this, it is very important for us, and it does need our consideration, uh, from our leaders who have gathered here today. We know vote matters, but most importantly, our vote matters. Various recent research reports, including one by the Operation Land Vote, has resulted in highlighting the fact that the Britain's ethnic minority vote will change the results of the 2015 general elections. The demographic shift means that the Britain's BAME community vote has a big impact on our modern day politics and how the decisions are made since our votes will determine our future in the country we need to politically educate our own communities. First, so we can have a competent, able pool of leaders to take leadership in the future. And to do this, it is very important that we pay a close attention to these studies as leaders and as community activists. We need equality in decision making and fair power sharing in the future British society. We will have to use our significant voting powers to able to be participate and excel in British society as respectable citizens. To be able to do this, we need to inform, educate, and empower our communities. These are the three letters I would really like my leaders to remember and to do something to deliver information, education, and empowerment. Because without information, education, and empowerment, we are not doing our job. And we will not succeed. According to a political study, 100, as my one of my colleague Frank said, there are 168 marginal seats depends on the ethnic minority vote to change the results of this general election. Together we can make a history, but only if we collectively exercise our civic right to vote and to mobilize more than half of our population, and that is blue. I'm just going to ask one thing. Can my honorable friends raise their hand if they have a female counselor who is sitting next to them? Can someone please raise my, all the counselors, this is to counselors, if they can raise their hand if they have a female counselor sitting next to them? One. Okay, I think I have made my point. I think I have made my point very clearly that unless we mobilize more than half of our population, we are not going to succeed. We as a community need to set up extensive program of information, dissemination projects to educate our communities on a grassroots level. We need to reach out to the communities that are further from the political arena. We need to make them understand the power of the vote unless we make them realize what vote does for us. We are not going to succeed in this society. The political empowerment program should uh, coincide with the ESOL learning and should be delivered in local community venues. Every councillor should make sure that they run at least a project to deliver such education in their electoral boards. Translated leaflets should be targeted at our communities in easy language, also street stores to educate and encourage our people to vote and to make them realize how and who to vote is very important. <coughs> to educate our women, we need to use facilities such as local schools, GP surgeries, libraries, and worship places such you as mosques. Just, okay, one, one more minute, um, Chair, and, and I'm, I'm pretty much finished because I have made my point. What I really want to most importantly say, because this is a very important time, and look, many of the politicians are here, I really would like to request this forum and the BMMA to work at, as accountable bodies to the present and future councillors and political leaders and make them accountable to their communities and please, please do ask them when they gain these positions A, they try to upscale themselves and go back to the communities and try to find out the right issues on the right time to take right actions. 
and door knocking, we need to recognize that, as Shagufta has pointed out, there's only one woman councillor here at the moment. And when I was elected, I think I, had, I was only, there were two, Shamim and myself. So we need to take this opportunity and utilize it fully. We need to see who could be our prospective candidates for next time. This time, obviously, we are fighting for general election. I mean, we need to have young people, we need to have young men, young women. And I really praise Liakat, Councillor Liakat, for raising Nadim to such a high standard. I mean, when he speaks, I really enjoy listening to Nadim. Mm -hmm. He is fully capable and able young person to have been elected, and, and I'm really proud of you, Nadim. So, whenever I speak to people, I refer to you, that we have Nadim, who is very well acquainted to his language, his poetry, Shero Shairi, so obviously I'm very, very proud of him. And I want all of you to please, when you're out there knocking the door, this is the time to recognize who is able, who is capable, to take him on or her on, to train them, to encourage them. I know how daunting this could be, especially for young women to come, especially just to sit here in the council chamber. And you know, I was faced with discrimination, racism, and had everything thrown at me. And Leafat was the witness, except the kitchen sink. But Allah Ta'ala just goes that they tell us we need to sakta. So he took me to the highest in this council, and I'm very grateful to Allah. And people like um, Councillor Leafat and others who are no longer with us, who have passed away, to give, gave me the strength to carry on. And I thank you. Please do encourage and do bring young people in this council chamber and in your councils as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for all the contribution that you make. And uh, obviously, one should make more than all of the ladies, especially uh, the contribution that you uh, certainly make. And we really proud to hear about this stuff. And it's really important to look overall and uh, we've got some really powerful uh, politicians uh, who are uh, in, in this room and especially the ladies because behind every successful man there's always a lady behind it uh, respective uh, of her. Uh, you certainly play a big, big, important part. Also want to thank uh, Councillor May Daskell who is here, one of our junior cabinet member and she's given up a very good time. Who is the cabinet member? And I also uh, want to really uh, uh, thank him for giving up time to listen to uh, some of the colleagues from out, uh, uh, out uh, today here in Waltham Forest. What I'm going to do is end over back to uh, Mushtaq Bashari uh, to introduce some very, very important guests uh, here, and uh, they will uh, give the keynote speeches. And then we will go back uh, in uh, to the chamber and uh, open up uh, if uh, people want to say one, one or two minutes, if they want to speak, we will take all the speakers. So uh, I know there's been loads of messages, please, yeah, I want to say, but we will come back to you. Thank you very much, Chairman, and I would want you to share this, but let me first say a few words about the people who have already spoken. I think in this chamber, you can see first generation, I'm one of those, I'm about 18 plus. So I'm first generation, then there is a second generation. Chaudhary Aftab Sahib's son is sitting here, and Manzoor Khan, Sial Sahib, who is an advocate from Pakistan, special thank to him, and he'll be sitting. But Chaudhary uh, Khan Sahib and uh, Afzal Akram Sahib, I will be introducing these two people, but there are people sitting from Redbridge, uh, farmer councillor yeah, Afzal uh, Khalid Sahib, uh, uh, Riyadh Khan Sahib, many other people. I want to thank everybody, media and all other people who are here. And I think when we open up, even if you are not speaking, 
could you stand up and say your name at least and say who you are, especially another very senior councillor, uh, Mohammad Javed, who was the leader of Red Bridge when, uh, uh, previously and also mayor. So can we give a big hand to all of those who are here? Uh, Saab, who is from uh, Lee Bridge uh, Mosque, and he was asked by another colleague who is stuck in the traffic, Azam Saab. We invited few people from the community to represent us and go back and tell them, look, the councillor are doing this. We should get involved. Our children should get involved, as it has been said. Uh, Councillor M. Bhatti Saab from Chesham is all the way. Chaudhary Aftab Saab is here. So many people who are here. But special thank to uh, Sara uh, Shamana. Am I right? Am I saying the right name? And I think she is uh, tweeting uh, at the moment that she is in full uh, welcome for us. She is the candidate in fighting against Goldsmith. Is it right? That Goldsmith. She is the candidate from UK party, so special welcome to her. And uh, 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 then, we, as the uh, uh, chairman has said, we will open up, and I think also Mr. Daimon Javed Saab and George Khan will be asked to say a few words and tie us up. I have not forgotten you want to say something. But before that, can I explain to the people who are not in the council that the leader of the council is locally the most important person? Do you agree, Councillor? Yeah. He runs all but he appoints cabinet members. And here are some cabinet members sitting who know that they are appointed by the leader. Leader is virtually the prime minister of the local authority. Am I right, Chairman? So I think my next speaker is leader of one of the largest para in London. And it's a privilege and proud to work with him because I know because Brent is very near to Kensington Chelsea, which I belong to. And Madam Mayor Khan might have done so concerned. She has extended her apologies because she could make it today, but she will be attending the future meeting. But before I invite the leader of Brent Council, Council uh, Mahmoud I will announce it. Unfortunately, I was thinking of holding the next meeting on the 14th of February, but I just checked the in Brent, it is very easy in Korea. So the following week, hold the meeting will be 20, 20th or 21st. April, we will type and will circulate the day to you. It will be in Brent Town Hall. He will be sharing the meeting because wherever sending out the positive messages uh, about what we are doing and what we can do and the positive things that we, uh, we, we can and we must do as well. Um, <coughs> the, other, the, the other way of how voting and politics can have an impact is, is also, I mean, it, at the moment, people are talking about Turkey, talking about Syria, talking about Iraq, but, um, and, and the terrorist things that are going on uh, across the country. Uh, but we, all, our children are, are being impacted by this. Impacted. Right? Only a few a week and a half ago, a week and a half ago, I had three, three young people in Brent make their way across to Turkey. Right? Alhamdulillah, thank God. Uh, we work with the police, we work with the authority, authorities who managed to stop them in, in, in Turkey uh, and we got them back. But how are we making sure that, that, that these children, these young people, have a voice as well? It's all, all fair and well, us sitting here and having a voice and talking about what, what, what we want to talk about. But where are the, the voices of the young people? They need a platform as well. At the moment what's happening is, if they start talking about Iraq, they start talking about Palestine, they start talking about Israel, what happens? Right? Everyone has to report them. They have to be, uh, they have to be watched. Right? Uh, and this prevent agenda, my friends, right? it's, it's something that we need to take a look at again. Right? Uh, pursue, prevent. Right? All these kind of things are going to impact on us. Right? And politics, voting, getting involved is your say of making sure that everything that, with that is impacting on us Right, is only impact us on, on a positive way. And the counter, uh, counter, uh, counter terrorism bill that was just passed recently, that is going to make things even much, much more worse. Right? And, and without us having a voice, right, things will get worse. <laughs> we need to make sure that we have a voice. We need to make sure that when we go out there, we will put the X in the right box. And we must make sure every single one of us right, goes back, takes that message home, and says, Go out there, and you've got your vote, and you vote for the right people who have the right agenda to make sure that we represent you and your voices and your needs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Patsab. And I also want to welcome Dr. Amir Agha and Councillor uh, Dr. Amir Agha, 
Councillor Shafiq Chaudhary and Councillor Anul Sadar Obi from Brent. So four of them out of six have come all the way crossing over the traffic where our food is stuck, unfortunately, at the moment. So I hope they will soon arrive and definitely who is doing the secretary job today and just and I hope everybody will put your details there because they are very important that in future we can keep you intact. Uh, I hope the food will arrive soon and then we will try to conclude the meeting, but there are many people who want to say something and they will say it. But before that, can I uh, invite uh, 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 one of my friends, as Councillor Yakubari has already introduced, uh, I think one of the longest serving Muslim parliamentarian uh, in uh, the parliament. Uh, he is also uh, very actively involved in this election. Uh, he is close to the hierarchy of the Labour Party and I'm really, on behalf of all of you, thankful for him on Saturday afternoon leaving his constituency, Berry Park, and coming to Waltham Forest and enjoying the evening with us and telling us why resisting and voting in next election is important for all of us who live in the United Kingdom. Thank you, uh, Mr. Shari. As always, uh, I probably am, you're probably the person that knows has known me for all the time that I've been in Parliament uh, since 2001. Uh, and for the record, I am the longest serving. I don't know whether that's a compliment or not, uh, but uh, I have been now the longest serving in the Parliament area. Uh, Councillors, Councillor Lecker, uh, Councillor Butt, uh, Councillors past, present and potential, Councillors that are here, uh, I think this is a very important meeting at a very important time. Uh, we're all gearing up now in the last phase uh, in the short campaign for the general election. And I think it's hugely important for all of us to understand what's at stake. And I think Councillor Butt started off some of those issues and uh, Madam Street back started some of the issues as well. Uh, and of course everybody else has mentioned the issues in between. Uh, and I'm going to try and, try and see if we can address some of them uh, in the points that have been raised. Uh, it's hugely important uh, issue for all of us because uh, it affects the communities that we belong to, the communities that we're uh, a part of, uh, and the society overall that we're a part of. Uh, the Labour Party stands for equality and justice. Uh, I joined the Labour Party in 1982. Uh, my father, prior to that, uh, was involved in a lot of community work, but he's also an active member of the Pakistan People's Party until then. Uh, he realised uh, in, in the early 80s that it was important if we are to have a say for ourselves and for our children to come, then we have to partake in the politics of this country. That was the reason that we joined uh, the Labour Party. It was deemed by my father and myself uh, that the party that we wanted to join was the Labour Party because of its attitude towards communities uh, and particularly the communities that we are part of. And we saw that throughout my upbringing uh, coming through uh, politics in the country. Uh, I saw that when Maggie Thatcher uh, bought in the poll tax uh, I'm not going to be overtly political, but this is an election period, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll beg it a little bit of grace. Uh, when, when she started off the poll tax, and who did it hurt the most? Who did it hurt the most? Not the people that were living in the mansions. It was the people in the community who were overcrowded in the first instance, and the punishment for being overcrowded is that you have to pay more money to live in those small houses that were overcrowded. That's what they did. And this election, as, as, as all elections are, but when the Conservative Party gets in, it's about ideology. It is about their ideology and the people they want to support. It's about what they feel is important to them in relation to zero hour contracts. Uh, it, it's what's there important to them in the uh, rhetoric that they represent. Uh, when Cameron was asked about zero hour contracts, he, he didn't have a clue because he doesn't know what it means to be on a zero hour contract. He doesn't know that you go into work one day and you come back home and wait for somebody to call you. You sit by your phone for three hours at least, hoping that somebody will call you and you go back in. 
and they want to make sure by the time you go back in that you will do exactly what you're told to do and make sure you do it twice as better as anybody else to make sure that you fall again. That is the practices of the Victorian era and that is what we are facing now and that's what we should move on from. And that's why I want to make a change uh, in this government. It's important for our community particularly, all of the AME community, because we are not <coughs> part of the establishment. No matter we have certain colleagues who want to join and aspire to the Tory party, uh, and, and I'll leave that for another day, a uh, debate that we can have, uh, and other parties as well. What we've got to do is to look at how we can contribute to the community and the society that we're part of. And to do that, and you know, Lekhan himself, himself being a mayor, his son uh, also uh, eloquently, uh, as he spoke earlier, uh, has been mayor. And we want people to engage in politics. And when people say, what, 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 what is going on in terms of registration? All I would point out to you is one thing, is when people concentrate on just one thing and not a wider diverse interest in the community, is what happened in Uganda. There were a huge amount of Asian people who had very, very good businesses, very, very wealthy business interests, but they weren't integrated in the overall structure and the community. And look what happened to them. Had it not been for the links that we had to the United Kingdom, most of them would have really suffered tremendously. And that is what politics is about. It's about ensuring that you have your interest. You know, I, I, a huge amount of credit to all those people who make great businesses and are doing great work. But that's not at the expense of engagement in community and society and having your say. We are hugely privileged in this country for the status of engagement in politics and the role that we play. For me to become a member of parliament from uh, where, where, where I originated from, I think it would be extremely difficult. Uh, and we all know how difficult that is. So we're in a very unique position here. We're in a unique position we can actually make a difference to what happens to us and how we determine the future, not just for ourselves, for our children, the education has been mentioned earlier, uh, and how we deal with that. So there are huge issues that we need to involve ourselves and deal with. Uh, one of the issues that was uh, raised by Sister Nasreen as well earlier on about participation in women. I, I have a little story to tell you about this in Birmingham. In Birmingham, in 2004, we implemented a policy which was that where there are two male councillors, the third one would be a female. And like, like a good Labour member, I, I ensured that we, part, we, we implemented that throughout my constituency and we succeeded uh, in doing that. There were a number of wards, uh, predominantly uh, Pakistani wards, which didn't implement <coughs> that. They didn't implement it until 2011, because they kept saying that we will only win if there's a man in this seat. And they continued doing that until I got totally fed up and I went to the NEC and said, if you don't apply this rule across the whole of Birmingham, then I will ensure that any women members that are in my constituency that we deselect them. Because you can't tell them not to deselect, so why would you tell me to deselect them? Because if we have a rule, and if we are in, in believers in equality and social justice, the women in the city of Birmingham also deserve, and in the Labour Party, also deserve equality and justice. So we've got, <laughs> we've got then the resolution passed where where there are two male councillors, the third one would be a female. And we made movements towards that. We, we've got some young, good uh, councillors, women councillors coming through. And we're now going to push to get some more in. So where there are two councillors and somebody wants to deselect, as is popular in our, in our community sometimes, they will have to deselect, deselect the male councillor and the female councillor. Uh, and so that's about getting them interested in how to do that. I was in Bradford, uh, or I'm in Bradford virtually every week because I, I'm having to work in Bradford West uh, in one of the campaigns that we're doing in order to try and get a woman candidate uh, in there, which I supported wholeheartedly, Nash Shah, uh, who's a fantastic ca uh, candidate who's got, gone through a huge amount herself. And I was sat there and I was absolutely astonished by the views that I had from some of the councillors who were saying that, of course, we, you're putting these, these, these young women into, the, into council for, for the seats, but how are they going to get selected? How are they going to get elected? They the, haven't got the contacts and we're not, we're not happy about this. And I said, well, fine. I said, first of all, it's your fault that you haven't 
got somebody involved, engaged, supported somebody, a young woman or a woman, to make sure that there was somebody to be there. You know this policy exists. So why haven't you done that? So don't blame the Labour Party, don't blame anybody else, blame yourself because you have to make sure that you can do that. And that's what we're going through at the moment, where there are significant BAE controlled areas where we don't want provision of women. And I would advocate that we do as much of that as possibly can. So there's a significant issue for us, for us to do that. And I think also, Council, I want to raise some of the issues uh, around the Iraq war and, and uh, currently uh, in relation to what's going on with, uh, with the issue of uh, uh, the uh, terrorism bill and, and, and those sort of issues. And he's quite right, there are issues for parliamentarians uh, to deal with. Local councillors uh, deal very much so on the nitty gritty, uh, on a local basis, education, uh, forces, provisions, community provisions, and then access to those sort of services, social services in particular, housing, uh, where there's an issue to deal with. And those are issues that are very important uh, to the community. And what we need to do is work along uh, with our parliamentary uh, candidates and members of parliament, obviously. Uh, to ensure that that moves forward. So that is quite right, but that's, that's what the function of the councillors is. But what we should do is to work as a team, where there are councillors and members of parliament, where there are candidates, uh, for both for parliamentary and for council seats. We should all work together as people that should be elected uh, uh, into council or, or parliament in those seats. So we need to do that very well. But there are some issues in, in, in relation to issues of attacking terrorism. Uh, I've been quite vocal on this, a lot of people know uh, what I say, most people may not agree. Uh, well, some people don't agree actually, most people that I would talk to in Birmingham and walk around the local, local community, uh, you know, very rarely I, I get challenged by, by some of the issues that I raise. We have got a real issue on our hands in relation to what's going on. And it's a failure on us because we have failed those young people. We have failed those young people who are travelling to Syria, have travelled in the past to other places to join in, in, in terrorist organisations. Because we failed them. And we've got to address that. We've got to address that to some of the issues around education. By the way, that VED program isn't perfect, and I'm, I'm currently speaking to VED Cooper uh, as to how we can make that more relevant uh, and interesting. The Conservative Party hasn't bothered to do anything with it over the last almost five years now. So we need to make a change on that to deal with that. But we would take responsibility for some of it as well. Because if we're not providing the right substance, the right information about our religion to our young children, then we are responsible because that is why they've been turned to extreme rights to be able to do that. And we would take responsibility in that. And whether we like it or not, there is a far bigger agenda here that we would address. Because we can't continue to allow ourselves to move forward and, and not be held accountable for some of those issues that are relevant to the community. You look at what's going on currently in Sweden, you look at what's going on in Germany, you look at what's going on in France in relation to the Muslim community. There is a real neo-fascist agenda here. That is against the Muslim community. The sooner we wake up to that, the sooner we realize what's going on, the better it is. And human nature is human nature. Whatever we say about how far we, 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 we move forward, don't think it gets back to the Primitive at the first possible opportunity they have. Look at what uh, the torture that was carried out in the Great Prison. The most barbaric torture that was carried out was by human beings. The current beheadings that are taking place are being carried out by human beings. So, irrespective of the technology that we have, we're going to look at how basic humanity can get back to. So, we have a responsibility in relation to that and we need to deal with that. The substantive point that I'm here to discuss, obviously, is about water registration. And this again, uh, I'm sorry to make this part political, this was a definite bill that was put through to stop the overall water registration taking place. The previous principle was that the head of the household was responsible for making sure all of the people that live in that household should be registered. So obviously, usually the father who was the head of the household had responsibility to make sure, uh, or the mother would make sure that all of the people in the house were registered. By leaving it to individuals and particularly young people who generally tend not to be bothered uh, about, unless they, they get a notification through their email or something else like on social media, they're not going to do it. And those notifications that they need to make aren't coming through social media uh, or, or, or by email to them. So they are not involved in this. I have had a, a, a loss of about over 8,000 people of the electoral register of 
just in my constituency, and colleagues similarly in Birmingham would do that. We're still using the campaign to push that forward. But it's very important for all of us to make sure that we push this campaign because what it will do ultimately, and this is what this government wanted to do at the start of this term, is to have a redraw of the electoral boundaries because the electoral rolls, they said, weren't even. So what do you do? You make it even worse. So the next time you come into power, there's even less people representing the community that you have at hand. And that affects councillors, and that affects parliamentarians, because that is what our constituency is based on, is people on the electoral register. Uh, and that's what this government So it's very important, and it's very important, right taken for the first example that I gave in terms of Uganda, that representation that you have. And only those people that try to cut that representation only for two purposes. One, to dis disenfranchise you, disenfranchise young people, because when you start to disenfranchise young people, you know that they're going to get totally disaffected. And you know what the outcome of that is. And you know what then the consensus group will, will, will be. So this is a concerted effort by individuals who wanted to make sure those people, like, like, like the public tax that was implemented, that people are disaffected and move away from the political engagement, which gives them the right to make the changes, to make the difference, to hold our councils accountable, to hold me accountable. I regularly, since I've been elected, do Young People's Parliament uh, in my constituency uh, and have done every single year. We have also a trip uh, of those young people. A number, fair, fair number of schools actually come to Parliament and I try to engage with them as much as I can because it's very important for young people to be engaged. But by dropping them off the register, totally disenfranchised. disenfranchised. And that is what's happening at the moment. That is what we need to do about it. So if we don't do that, we'll suffer as a consequence for all of us. And I say to people, you know, obviously I've made my choice, the Labour Party, I think is the best party to go for. Whatever you want representation, it's fine for you to do that because that is what democracy is about. Democracy is about engaging in all of the process, in all the thoughts and all the theologies that you have. Fine, you're entitled to do that. But let's please make sure that if we're going to do that, that we do that properly and we do that through, through the proper engagement. So there are a lot of issues with that. We've got till the end of April to ensure that those people can still get on. You know, you have to be, of course, careful how you do that because there are pestilences that people, again, of inner view to set in the community. Uh, and it's already been said that, you know, it, it damages the uh, image of the Pakistani community, community predominantly. And it was going to do as well because of actions of a very, very few people who try to manipulate the system. We're not here to manipulate the system. We're here to play by the system, to make sure that our votes, our rights are counted. That's what this is about. This is not about manipulation of the system, to ensure that all of us have a right for what we're entitled to and exercise that properly and freely. So, without taking much, much more of your time, uh, I know that you've been uh, waiting here since about five o'clock. Uh, and, and so, unfortunately, the traffic uh, was very, very difficult as well on the way back. Uh, my friend Chuddy was a hole at the back who uh, was kind enough to bring me down. Uh, also, uh, a potential councillor, I hope, inshallah, very soon. Uh, he's been working very hard. We were working, he's working in uh, uh, one of the constituencies. We were trying to get the uh, uh, support for a minor constituency, and then he had to come and pick me up when I was doing some stuff. So uh, we got here as soon as we could. The traffic, hopefully, uh, won't be that bad on the way back. Uh, so we can get back, because I'm going to go to Bradford tomorrow morning. Uh, and to do some work there as well. So, look, this is about ensuring that all of us are represented. I'm thankful for all of you uh, for turning up here today. I know that Saturday is very important for all of us, uh, and particularly to spend some time with the family, more importantly at this time, to spend some time door knocking. So, whilst we're taking ourselves away from that, please ensure that the reason why we're taking ourselves away from that is to ensure that more and more of our representation is made, more of our people are registered to vote. <coughs> it's not just the young, it's the elderly, it's the women, it's all of those people in that, in that arena that, that come out to vote. So, Dakota, as the chairman, uh, I just want to thank you uh, again for doing that. Uh, and also, in fact, as well, Shari, who's endless in, in, in his harassment of me, uh, continues because uh, he, I've never, I haven't checked this number for about 20 years, and I think he knows that, and he knows that the number is off by heart. Uh, and he's able to bring me whatever he needs to. So once again, thank you all very much for coming. And let's have a good time. Congressman Musa, thank you very much. Uh, can I ask you, because I know the traffic is still bad. I'm receiving messages. 
uh, our food is starting to traffic, and I hope you and the whole will eat something before you go back. Otherwise, you will be seeing the traffic going back. So um, I'm really thankful for you to come and lot of bombs and <coughs> eventually has got disappointed and I think has gone back home. So he will be stuck in the traffic going back. I'm handing over to uh, Councilor Nyakatari as a chair to open this, but please uh, don't be impatient. We are, as a Pakistani, sometimes impatient. So wait for a few minutes. I think the food should be here any minute. And as soon as it comes, you will see a slip will come to me. I've asked uh, Lakat and Agas to keep on checking. Last time, when I heard it was 20 minutes away, and he should be, uh, no, it was about uh, 15 minutes ago, so another five minutes. But can I hand over it back to Lakat? He will open it. You can speak, introduce yourself, say something, and then at the end, I will say something, and then he will conclude the meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, and uh, thank you. I uh, really want to thank uh, the speakers, uh, the leader of the council, great uh, leader, uh, and uh, for your inspiring words, and all of those uh, uh, really went really well. So, a uh, big thank you to you, and also a big thank you to Khalima Musa, our senior most uh, member of parliament, and we're really, really honored to have you here, all the way from Birmingham, and uh, to speak. Uh, at this gathering here, uh, at such an important, and uh, I know how busy you were, uh, and uh, Mashallah Shali Sahib uh, told me, and uh, to get you here, it's a great honor, and also to see you healthy now, you know, with uh, uh, your own ill health before, and uh, speaking in such a powerful way. So, big round of applause for both of our big speakers. Just to open up now, uh, to, and uh, first of all, I would like to ask uh, uh, Tai Mezasa from Newham, uh, who's a, a really big uh, activist and uh, aspiring to become a councillor, but also uh, you were part of that uh, event that I went to. I cannot remember, I uh, forget that. Uh, Tai Mezasa. Uh, something. Most of the things has been said by all these uh, uh, people, members here sitting here. The uh, importance of the voting register. As the special group has had a few platforms we can use it, but I'm not going actually to back that. I know that I'm very, very few mayors here. Um, and one of our conservative police said there is uh, 128 seats where actually black votes can make a difference. But there's a new book here now, which is called The Power of the Black Vote in 2015, written by the Simon Bully, who is a national coordinator of Christian Black Vote. And he said there's 205 seats, which actually Black Vote can make a difference. So it's a huge majority. Now the question is, why they're not coming out? As the Amish Lassar said, there is people being registered, although the system has been changed. They may not be registered, they may have to register again maybe, but they are registered. But why are they not coming out? What is the reason for that? <laughs> I am uh, very proud to be a Labour Party, but uh, beyond that Labour Party, we are just talking about as a general man of the moment. I think the lack of trust there, the, uh, the parties at the moment. People don't come out because of the lack of trust, plus the media is not helping, plus some racist comment come from the different parties, it's not helping. So they are not going out. So how we can do that? I think we need to change our mentality as well at the moment, to be honest. The first of all, um, all Asian parents here, they probably say to their kids, be a doctor, be an engineer, be this. How many of you said be a politician? No one. Because they don't think, they don't think a politician is a career. That's the other problem. So politician is a career, actually. And the important thing, another thing is well, when you go to the university and try to get a place, I think you go to the lowest UCAS point to get that uh, political degree. So people don't like to be a politician. That's another thing. And another thing is well, um, the citizenship. They take it away from schools. Why is that? The policymakers should know that the citizenship is a very, very important to come back to school, encouraging young people to come back and understand the politics, understand the whole thing. I'm not taking so much time, but what I'm saying is these points are very, very important. We encourage your kids there to come into politics, study politics, and that's very important. We can make a difference in 205 seats. And 
fantastic hell of a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, my next speaker is uh, indicated at Councillor from Redbridge, uh, Councillor Bush uh, to say a few words. Thank you very much. Thank you. First of all, again, I think uh, most has already been said, but what I must uh, emphasize, a community can be as strong as its individual members. And if we are not uh, prepared to register ourselves, if we are not prepared to go and particularly participate in uh, our local elections or uh, in our general elections and have some kind of dialogue at the doorstep with the politicians. I think that's uh, something which we seriously need to look at. And engagement, young children, especially in these days in our communities, if we look around, we, we have quite a few young faces, but this mostly it's sort of over the, the first or second generation who, who have kind of participated, not only succeeded while they were working hard, but also on the politics front. But with that message, that need to go to our children, and uh, it's us who, who need to show them the way. And again, we talked about uh, the voter registration and what benefits it's going to bring, but also we need to look at ways how we can engage the community, either it's going to through community centers, your local mosques, your door-to-door, -door, means we, we have a very little time, it's only until I think 20th of April in that bridge, and uh, I think other parts of similar kind of days. And it's just ensuring that we take this opportunity, go and communicate with the residents and make the best of it. Thank you. And now I'd like to ask uh, Councillor Joe Cullen to say a few words. Sorry. I'm not going to take up too much time because I don't want to be between yourself and the food. I think the Shari Sal has been coming back and forth, so the, the food may be here, so I'm going to be, keep it very short. Firstly, um, I just want to say welcome again to Waltham Forest, uh, arguably one of the nicest town halls. So I think this, uh, yeah, welcome all. Um, also, thank you very much for the Shari Sal and Uncle Liakas for uh, arranging this meeting here today. Uh, and also, what a, what a great privilege to have Khalid Mahmood and also Akhtar Bhatt Saab, the uh, uh, leader of Red Council. Can we all please give them another quick round of applause? Uh, um, I think uh, I don't want to reiterate uh, the things that have already been said. Um, a lot of people have spoken about the importance of why we need to vote. I mean, uh, after, uh, after Budsop spoke about the local issues, about getting involved in sort of housing, education, hardly touched upon some of the other challenges that we face in terms of nationally foreign policy, foreign policy whether it's in Palestine, whether it's freedom of Kashmir, um, and more recently the rise in Islamophobia. Look, all of these issues, I think the key message for me is all of these all issues can only be tackled if you register to vote. So if you're not registered to vote, we can sit here and talk about local issues we can talk about national issues, we can complain. And we are, as a, as a let's, let's be honest, as a Pakistani Kashmiri community, we are very good at complaining. We are very good at complaining, but you know, if we are to make a difference, yes, we can't all be politicians, we can't all be council MPs, but we need to exercise uh, our right to vote. It is a privilege. Don't forget that people died fighting to try and get this, uh, uh, get this right. We should be proud, living in this country, that we have that right to vote. So please, exercise your right to vote. And obviously, I was speaking to my colleague earlier, it's, it's, as a banker, speaking as a banker, it's good for your credit history as well, so don't, don't forget that. But no, seriously, um, if you want to make it, have an impact on foreign policy, um, and, and we can sit here and talk about all the, all the issues, more recently, we mentioned Islamophobia, the, the local issues. Please, 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 get your colleagues, your friends, your family to go out there, register to vote. Just a, a last point, again, it's very, I'm very, very proud to stand here in Wolfram Forest uh, in this chamber. We here have one third of our councillors are from the Pakistani Kashmiri community, and off that, on off, the, off, off, off that one third, we have four female Pakistani Kashmiri or Pakistani uh, Muslim councillors. One is Nahid, obviously, who's here today, and three others who couldn't make it today. So, again, we are very proud in Wolfram Forest uh, that we have. We have that representation, but it's not enough. Uh, my my young, I don't know if he's younger than me, say my brother uh, Raza was talking about the makeup of Wolfen Forest, um, and, and, and I was telling him obviously the, the demographics, and he asked me, he said, how come we haven't got a Pakistani MP? And it's a very good question. We have a very large uh, community here, and I, I'm sure we can say the same about Nuan, but these are the kind of things we need to think about. You know, we have got um, a, a large uh, Pakistani Kashmiri community, but you know, I don't think we are fully representative. We've seen the turnout in local elections as sometimes as low as 30-40%. Not good enough. 
So we need to obviously just get a little bit more smart, a little bit more clever, let's get, get, get ourselves to register to vote and then again uh, we can only deal with the issues and again Islamophobia is one of the key key um, uh, challenges that we face. We, we spoke, uh, sorry, I mentioned the prevent, I think Harlan mentioned the counter-terrorism bill. Um, again, these are all issues that we're going to have to grapple with. And the only way you're going to do it is to register. Please go out there, speak to your committees, no excuses, get, get down to, to, the, to the residents and, and, and register to vote. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Professor Liakot, to giving me a chance to speak in your chamber. The lot of councillors already have spoken about to register the vote. And I would say, as someone said rightly, that we are very good to complain, but we are not really taking actions, but we say it as well. If you look at the histories, Pakistanis, they always moan about that, that we don't have a right in Pakistan to cast a vote. We always moan about that. We always talk about the Pakistani politics. We are living in this country. We have to participate in this country's in politics. It's no good for us to go back and say, I belong to this party or that party into the Pakistani politics. And, so more, and also, is first of all, the problem of registration of the uh, vote. And also, second problem, which I face by myself, that not many people bother to go to the polling station to cost the vote. And I know, personally, I got experience, nearly 20% in my ward, Asian people don't go and cost their votes. And what about someone said, you know, it's very difficult to fill the form because there's a new system. If you ask the people, there is some benefit for you and there's a 40-page application form, people will go and fill it up. They ask the children, come on, they go to city's rice bureau. They will get everything help they want to and they will fill up the application uh, form for the benefit even they get 10 pounds for that. Why is that? Are we not really... The we are thinking that we are not participating in this country properly? Yes, I would say so. And I would say, the other lady said, you know, that we have lack of this uh, representation from these uh, ladies to be a counselor. I can assure you, my daughter Rabia Bhatti, Councilor Rabia Bhatti, most of people now, she's the youngest counselor and she uh, is from Russia. <laughs> and also the people say, young people don't come into politics. I would say, Yes, if you encourage them. I, in my family, we are the three politicians. I belong to the Labour Party. My daughter, she belongs to the Conservative Party. And my son belongs to UK. And, and I, always, I always encourage my wife that's the only one we can see left for Lib Dem. <laughs> but she said, no, I have to control everybody. <laughs> and one thing, we decided not to talk about politics on the dinner tables. And I would say also, the vote registration date is 20th April. Yeah. And please, please, I will beg you, you go back because you are fighting for the election. You tell the peoples that they should register their vote on 20th April is the last day. They should do it now. 
They should not wait until the 20th April. And then also you encourage to come and cast your vote as well. That's very important. And secondly, I can tell you, most of the time you have seen that most of the Asian peoples, they are fighting in one seat against each other. Yeah. And that's not good as well. They are not helping you. So it's better before you make that decision, you have to see who is your opponent. And you find the right place and then you can stand for the election and help each other. And I don't want to mention the other uh, uh, peoples, you know, so they have nearly represented about 60 percent MPs they have in the, in, in the parliament and we don't have it. Then we blame the politicians. Why not we blame ourselves if we are not going to cast our vote, if we are not adjusting our votes and if we are not able to participate in these elections. And please, I would say to you all that please go back to your community, encourage them to register the vote and also encourage them to come cast the votes. Thank you very much. Thank you for saying that, and it's really encouraging to see at least your different debates at your uh, dinner table. I'm certainly not encouraging my family to join any other party, except Labour, so the message is really, really clear from my point of view. That, uh, <laughs> my father was a Labour Party member a long time ago, and so am I for the last 37 years. And uh, my son is a Labour Party member. And, but obviously everybody has their own, own, own way of thinking. It's really important. Uh, today we are gathered here uh, under the umbrella of Pakistani Kashmir Council Forums. And we welcome all parties uh, irrespective of whatever. And it's really important. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we are doing the best for <coughs> the communities out there. Because Pakistani Kashmir community is a very, very important community. The only way we can prosper is if we do take part in politics, politics, and then we can be part of the decision making, and that's how we prosper. Uh, my next speaker, uh, who is also uh, from Wolf Forest, former mayor, uh, Councillor Masood Ahmed. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Distinguished guests. Janab Khalid Mahmood, MP, Yaqa Saab, Lashari Saab, and my good friend, Abad Saab. We don't have uh, distinguished colleagues, friends. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, we don't have British Prime Minister here. We have Prime Minister of Brent here. So we are very yeah. And, uh, you know, there are several definitions, if you read in the textbooks, about democracy. Right? But my definition is very precise, that in democracy you count the number of heads, not brains. Right? So this is very important. If you want to go for elections, you just count the number. Right? And uh, I just uh, switch over to the other thing. You know, this is a very important forum. Very, very important. If we get united together, we can raise one voice. One voice for Britain, one voice for Pakistan. Right? Because we our Pakistani origin. Our identity is Pakistani. This is Britain is our adopted homeland. So we are we are very delighted and proud that we are British, British Pakistani. So what I want to say here is that we should have two pledges from our members of parliament candidates. One pledge is if British government can hold referendum in Scotland, why can't they hold a referendum in Kashmir? This is very important. Support it in the parliament because this is the British who, who left this legacy. You know, all these two countries are fighting with each other for 65 years. There is no point. We are in 21st century. Right? And the second one is a very important point that if we here get the pledge from the members of parliament that Pakistan is going through very difficult times for the last 20 30 years, why not the British government can write out all the debts to Pakistan? It's very important. Because why Pakistani old rulers have been taking the money from here and spending wherever where the ordinary people never benefited, right? Now is the time because British government has already done in year 2000, they wrote off so many debts to third world countries. I think we should raise our voice from this forum and ask the British government, please write off all the debts to Pakistan. Let's, let the democracy support be supported 
and we can continue our journey. With these words, I congratulate <coughs> Lashari Saab and Yasa Saab. You know, very brilliant. You know, this is very important. I, I strongly support this forum, and I think if you take into account my two uh, motions, pledges, <laughs> pledges, you know, we should get these things done from our members of parliament. I think uh, Khalid Mahmood either agree or disagree. Disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Disagree. You know. Because when last time when Tony Blair was prime minister, last question, no promises been given. What we did in 1993 uh, was the Cook Amendment in relation to Kashmir, uh, which we wanted to put forward. Uh, and unfortunately, what has happened over the years in relation to Kashmir is that both Pakistan and uh, India had uh, competent building measures. Uh, which didn't really get very far because of the different attitudes by both governments, by Pakistan government and India government. Uh, you're talking, speaking somebody of Kashmiri origin, uh, so I'm quite happy to discuss this issue, uh, and I understand all the issues around that. Where you're talking about writing out the debts to Pakistan, I'm sorry I don't agree with you because uh, I think there is a huge resource in Pakistan. If Pakistanis can't hold their own uh, governments to account, then how, why, why should the British taxpayer be paying that off? Uh, there's a serious issue. Pakistan needs to get its house in order, hasn't got its house in order for a long time, uh, and it needs to do that. It should be a, 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 one of the outstanding uh, governments and countries in the region. It isn't because of individual greed uh, by different people doing different things. And we've got to be serious about this. And, and we do this all the time when different people come from, from Pakistan, from different parties, we divide ourselves and we run around supporting them. Why don't we be fair? I've done this throughout as a big member of parliament. I've spoken to people, predominantly in opposition, when they come, because I'm quite happy to support people who want to move forward in Pakistan. But when they get into the leadership, they don't, they don't really want to know, and I don't really want to know them either. Uh, because when you try to engage with people, try to do the best thing. Democracy isn't about one election. Democracy is about accountability, transparency, and the rule of law. And until you start to provide that in Pakistan, you will not have democracy. And what we need to do is ensure that we build those proper reasons for us to do that. I am very happy to work with the British government to support, push the government to find a resolution for the people of Kashmir. But what you've got at the moment, and we're not even addressed about this issue in Kashmir, is that you've got Indian foreign policy, which is about offensive defence. What offensive defence means is that the Indian government will now start and have started uh, excursions across the, the border. And it just starts in Kashmir, and it will then go to Punjab. Uh, it will go to Stan, and already uh, some of the, 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 the Taliban support that's coming uh, from India that's, that's going through. So look at what's happening at the moment in the country. Look at what we're doing to get our house in order before we can start putting our hand out to the US. Unfortunately, Pakistani governments for too long have been putting their hands out to the IMF uh, and, and putting the future generations at risk in relation to that. So let's get those people to start to look at that, and let's just concentrate on where we should be concentrating. <laughs> no, 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 that's all I want to say. So that there is one day there is consensus in the parliament to go for these two things. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will certainly have time and networking later on. And obviously, if people want to be paid, then that's why it's really important this part. So we should be going to forum for specific topics. If we discuss that and we keep it on that basis. We can hold these meetings and we can pressurise people. It's it's really important, and then we do take it forward. Um, I, the Waltham Forest is one of the uh, a council that has uh, passed a resolution on biodiversity protection for fish breeds. Uh, it was one of the first one uh, in the United Kingdom, and it's one of the oldest resolution anyway. But today is not the time to discuss that because today specifically. We want to discuss that voting, otherwise it just uh, get a bit, a bit messy. I want to call up uh, Councillor Hassan Khan, who is the cabinet member uh, here at the Forest. Councillor Hassan Khan. Thank you, Councillor. Well, I'll start by thanking the Maximum Commission.
Committee of Forum for organising this meeting. I think it's a very timely meeting, seeing as we're only a few weeks out from the general election. Absolutely, we need to remind everyone of the importance of voting. Councillor uh, Buck from Brent spoke about some of the issues that we have in Brent, obviously, from the Northern Forest perspective. In the Northern Forest, some of our residents, uh, on average, live eight years less than people in West London. Our schools don't receive, our teachers don't receive an unweighting, which means we're not always able to attract the best teachers out there. Our businesses don't receive the support they should be receiving, and that's an issue to do with business rates. Our residents pay the highest amount of council tax uh, across London. And these factors are very important, and that they're primarily due to the fact that we do not receive the fair share from central government. And locally, again, we encourage people, and that's one reason why they need to get involved, to make sure government can move from Forest its fair share. The Forest is classed as an outer London borough, but it's certainly very different from, for example, Bexley and some of those other boroughs. It's an outer London borough, very much in London issues. And that's one of the reasons I think we need to encourage people to vote. The, the issue of women in politics has been raised, and I'm proud to say Labour has introduced, as has been alluded to by Parliament Moon, uh, positive discrimination, local council elections where within a board there has to be a woman candidate and on constituency elections for MPs again we see all women shortlist and I think that's very important and what we've seen through that is a much more uh, fairer parliament which is reflective of the different, different um, women and female that we have in the country. But I would, I would urge our MPs and our senior councillors to, I think, start making the point to the NEC and to the hierarchy of the Labour Party for positive discrimination for BAME MP candidates. Because what we're seeing in Parliament is a, is a Parliament is certainly not reflective of the country when we talk about BAME people. <coughs> and I think that's an important point that we, going forward, need to start asking around Labour's showing the weight on women. Uh, being involved in politics and I think by attracting, uh, the only way we're going to attract more people from the Bain background is to have uh, all Bain shortlists for constituency elections. On that note, the Chair, I will, I'll leave it there. Again, I'd like to thank you all for all of this meeting, uh, which I'm hoping out of this we'll see more people registering to vote for the general election. <laughs> From Barking and Dagenham, uh, who's uh, uh, quite an influential councillor in Barking and Dagenham, uh, Councillor Dr. Zissa. Aouz Billahi Mnish Chaitwaan Mnishji, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Thank you, Khaled and Kisa, Chairman, Jaka Tali Sahib, and Mustaq Lashari sir, I don't time I just want to say, I'm a councillor London Borough of Barking and Dagenham, and I'm elected <coughs> councillor for Labour Party. And just to say to uh, all my colleagues, say, we have to register the vote, like, uh, you know, we have uh, 17 wards in London Borough of Barking and Delhi. And 17 wards, we, every week, every Saturday, we go door to door, one by one ward, and ask to the people to how they register the vote, how they po do the postal vote. Every Saturday we go. And today, today is the Saturday, we go 45 people out, door to door. And I just suggest to everyone, to all my colleagues, councillor colleagues, so you have to arrange the action of the ward action team and go just door to door. Even if your family, even your friend, even is uh, your colleague, just knock the door and educate them. Just I, I just request that one, and then it is lost. I have two new colleagues. I just welcome to them is Councillor Ahmed and Councillor Vadaj. 
is from New Home Concert. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. If I miss somebody, I mean, if I have, if anybody, please. Uh, I'm looking at everybody. I don't want to upset anybody. Time is running short. So I, I see Councillor Natasha who's uh, come late. So there is an excuse uh, because uh, she's come from the uh, traffic all the way from Ealing. And I would like her to say a few words, very few words. Councillor Natasha. Thank you very much. Uh, Chair, Councillor Yakut, Khaled Bimund MP, Councillor Bart. Assalamu alaikum and good evening to all the distinguished guests over here and my fellow colleague councillors. I'm a councillor from Ealing and uh, yes, I've been out all day from the morning on site visits and then canvassing and we had our campaign launch and I did inform earlier that I would be late and there was bad traffic of course. So my apologies to everybody on that. Um, I'd like to congratulate you on holding this inaugural meeting for your forum and I think it is a brilliant step. It is much needed as well. The topic that you have chosen is something that we are all struggling to achieve as well. Getting our ethnic community to register to vote and to be out and participating and making sure that what is the civil duty is fulfilled. And we must make sure that we do inform on our colleagues to go out and talk to the people and ensure that they know that they have the right, that this is their voice and it is important that it is heard. We do have, I think, 20 days left, 20 odd days, um, 20 paper, isn't it? Uh, which is the deadline to register to vote. So it is ample time. This is a room full of people, Asians. I, I was uh, expecting more of a variety of ethnic diversity over here, but um, this will do because this is a lot of families. And a lot of families means extended families. And we can go back and take the message. We can ask people to vote, to register. It is said that the ethnic community's vote can make or break a seat that has been held fast by one party. And if we feel that we need to change, we need to get the vote out. We need to get the ethnic vote out to come on the day and make the voices heard. We ourselves living over here do need this change. We need to ensure that what we want is also delivered by the government. That we vote for the ones who we feel will deliver whose values are reflected in their manifesto and who reflect our values. It is extremely important that we look at all of that. I'm not going to talk over here about Pakistan and Kashmir, but I will make a comment on something which uh, the councillor over there said about the Bain candidates. <coughs> at the Bain annual conference, I did raise a similar question. It was categorically put away. We were told that was not going to happen. All women's shortlist is what we are looking at. But over here we are sitting together. And if we become united, and if we raise our voice, I'm sure <coughs> it will be heard. And I think it is time that we did raise our voice, we did become united, because the only strength we have is in unity. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm just going to hand over back uh, to Mushtaq uh, South in a minute, but I just want to thank uh, um, uh, the media. I think it's really important that they do the coverage of, of this important occasion about the, uh, and uh, all of the media. I really want to thank the press, I want to thank uh, GEO, ARY, Dunya News, Daily South, Jalan, The Nation, JK News, uh, and a lot of other, and also there's a representative from the Pakistan Journalists Association and all. Uh, we've got the uh, vice chair here, we've got the chairman here from the Pakistan Journalists Association, we've got some really, really important people, Shahadza from all the way from Pakistan, uh, Jodi Khalsa, Jodi Riasa, and there are many, many people here that uh, I, I'm going to. Uh, I can't 
can't mention every single name because I'm going to miss somebody, but everybody's an important uh, person here that's come here uh, and contributed towards this here today solely on the basis of, uh, uh, of why we want to vote and we should register vote. It's really, really important. This is your forum. This uh, Pakistani Kashmiri Council forum is your forum. You need to dictate how it goes ahead. And whenever we've got subject, we want to make sure that we are, uh, we want to take that on board. And today, you know, all of the observation from all, uh, I mean, if anybody want to, from the press want to say a word, they, they most welcome uh, one, one of you if you want to say a word. Can I ask a question? Uh, you will in a minute, in a minute. Yeah. Uh, I, I've, I've just asked a question to the president. Nobody wants to speak, thank you. So I'm just going to ask the last, last speaker, uh, Professor Sam, but we're talking about solely today about the right of voting. Yeah, it's not about the issue today. This is solely about the right of voting. One minute, please. I'm for the right of voting. Yeah. Right of voting. 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 We are with you, thank you very much. We need votes. But what for? For Pakistan, for Kashmir, Kashmir and Pakistani councillors, Kashmir and Palestine are the most senior agenda in the nation, which are the threat to the nuclear threat in Pakistan. Thank you, Pastor Masood, every time he speaks about Kashmir. Kashmir is a threat to the nation, and to Pakistan, and British are responsible for that. They have not fulfilled that agenda. So please, I request, remember those who are suffering in pain again and again. When you vote, when you go to parliament, and please make the commitment, ask them, please, that when you go to the parliament, don't remember, don't forget Kashmir. <coughs> Kashmir is the issue. It's the unfulfilled agenda of British last time it was the Labour government. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we really appreciate that, uh, all the effort and work that you do. Uh, I missed that from the press, uh, UK, uh, up, uh, thank you for coming and covering this event, and also from the third uh, world solidarity, my friend here. I'm just going to pass over to Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'm a Mutsak, and I know the media want to interview a lot of people here. I'm, I'm concluding the meeting in two minutes. Can I say, can I congratulate everybody? for coming here and the people, especially thanks to those who have not spoken. Can we give them a big hand? Professor Saab, we will have many meetings. Iqbal Sindhu Saab, Nubar Malak Saab, Kiran, Hina Malak, many are here. So we thank everybody who has come here. Can I say that today's meeting is just one जो नुक्ता निकलता है वो एक पंजाबी में मैं आपसे शेयर करना चाहता हूं क्योंकि आज हमने बेटे को रिक्वेस्ट की थी कि वो शेयर ना सुनाए ना लियाकत सुनाए मैंने वो रिजर्व रख के कंक्लूड पे आपको मैं सुना दूंगा एक शेयर है प्रोफेसर साहब आपके लिए और ये हम जहातों के रहने वाले लोग हैं चौधरी आफताब और स्पेशली सियाल साहब ये भाई वो भी थी दो मिनट मैंने दो मिनट की रिक्वेस्ट किया करेंगे आप ही दो मिनट खामोशी से रहेंगे तो बिल्कुल चौधरी साहब बैठे हैं यहाँ पे हमारे जमीन अफ्तर साहब ने आए कैरे से सरफा रंजम साहब वो शेर है राजा फैज साहब बहुत पसंद करता है दो शेर एक शीशे ऊपर तुरा पहिया कंधा चाड़ी जाते हैं शीशे ऊपर तुरा पहिया कंधा चाड़ी जाते हैं जिला रहा शाम रहने चले वो चाड़ी जाते हैं चले वर्गे पाए जाते हम यहाँ अमेरिका को भी डिस्कस कर सकते हम यहाँ पे रूस को भी डिस्कस कर सकते हम यहाँ पे चीन को भी और कई क्योंकि बरतानिया का एक हिस्ट्री है एक तारीख है उसको डिस्कस करना चाहिए हमारे पास बहुत अच्छे स्पीकर बैठे हैं तो तीन तीन घंटे बोल सकते हैं रियाज खान लेकिन उसका एक शेर बताए आज की दुनिया जिसमें हम रहे और वो ये है कि हम देहातों में जो तकड़ा सीन वाला होता है ना वह जब कमजोर को खाने ही देता उसको अलहदा बांध देता वो गरीब रह जाता है जो कमजोर है उस पर पंजाबी का शेर है उस पर शेर का शेर का मॉडल पकड़े जैसे 
ਮਾੜੇ ਆਪਨ ਮਿਲਦਾ ਨੂੰ ਤੱਕੜੇ ਪਰ ਨੂੰ ਕੰਜੀ ਖੁਰਾਨੀ ਦਾ ਪੱਟੇ ਪਰਿਆਂ 